guys, what's up? Caleb Downing here, and today we're gonna go over the Silencer Co. Omega 45K, their 45 caliber short suppressor. So let's get into it. All right, now right off the bat, um, no, this stuff was not sent to me. This is somebody else's suppressors, that, and I'm very grateful for them for letting me use it for this review and stuff and to talk about it and share these things with you. Um, I do not own one of these. Like I just said, this is somebody else's, but I do have an Omega 9K, and I bought that a long time ago. It is a fantastic can, so I had great expectations and great hopes for the Omega 45K, and I got to tell you, spoiler alert, this thing's awesome. Okay, it's really awesome. So, before we really get into any real um, personal opinions and things, even though I kind of spoiled it by saying I, I like this can, uh, let's go ahead and read some specs, uh, get some data for you guys. I'll throw that up here on the screen, and I'm just basically going to read it off. And this is taken straight off of Silence Co.'s website. All right? So, there's your SK, uh, SKU number for and UPC numbers, if you guys care about that. Caliber rating, very important, 9mm to 45 ACP and 300 blackout. Um, you also have, for accessories, it says it uses the Alpha Series, uh, ASR, 3-lug, and piston. That's cool. MSRP is about 865 ish bucks. You can get it a little bit cheaper than that usually, but that's MSRP. Weight is 11.4, or excuse me, 11.1 ounces. Length is 6.39 inches. Diameter is 1.48 inches. Material, stainless steel, 17.4 uh, stainless steel. These are, I'm going to say estimated because this is taken from Silencer Co. And this is just the information that they're giving. But their estimated 9mm decibel is 137.7 decibels. Uh, 300 blackout subsonic, very important, is 133.5 decibels. And 45 ACP is 135.9 decibels. I hope I read that right. But I threw it up there on the screen if you guys are really wondering... That's what that is, all right? Okay, so that's the specs and data for you if you're wondering lengths and widths and weights and all that kind of stuff. That's that's the information for you there, and that was taken directly off of Silence Coast website. So if you have questions, I refer you to them because they're the manufacturer. They have the information there for you, okay? What comes in the box, all right? This is very important. Some people really need to know this, and some of this is actually very important. What comes in the box, obviously your suppressor comes in the box, right? You're not gonna sell you suppressor without giving you the suppressor. You also have a direct thread 5 8 by 24 adapter, right? So this screws right back into the back of this suppressor. Direct thread, not for use on pistols, but like a 300 blackout or a PCC, pistol caliber carbine, right? A, a barrel that doesn't move, basically. If you have a barrel that moves, like 99.99% .99 of the pistols out there, you have a spring and a spring retainer, right? These things are basically part of the booster assembly. The booster is needed for suppressors. It basically unlocks the suppressor from the barrel during cycling, and it allows the pistol to cycle. If you direct thread, direct thread without a booster, a pistol onto, or a pistol, a suppressor onto a pistol, it'll work, it'll shoot most likely, but it's not gonna cycle the gun because that barrel is, is weighs X amount of, ounces whatever and you strap on the suppressor on the end it adds a lot of weight so it needs to the booster basically allows the suppressor to disengage slightly disengage from the barrel and the barrel can move right under recoil i'm sure there are other people that explain it better than that but you need you need to understand that so don't go direct threading your 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 suppressor onto your pistol and wonder why it doesn't work you need the booster assembly right so it does come with the spring and the retainer but it does not does not come with a piston. You need to buy a piston. Some people could get upset with Silencer Co. With, for not sending a piston with this, but you gotta understand, if you're, this is a 45, um, suppress, 45 caliber suppressor. So, if you are gonna shoot 45, more than likely, you're gonna have either like a 5 8 by 24 um, threaded barrel, or I can't remember off the top of my head what it is. It's like an 11 by something out or the other, some weird other um, thread pattern for 45s. And that's what you need to know. I could tell you numbers and things, which off the top of my head, I'm having a brain fart, I can't. But whatever your specific barrel is, you might have some weird thread. You need to know that. And you need to get a piston that is threaded for that barrel. You understand that? There's not, there's not too many thread patterns out there, but there's enough of them that if Silencer Code gave you all the pistons that would work with this suppressor, right? The half by 28s for nine millimeters, five eighths by 24, and all the other ones out there, that would just exponentially drive up the price because it costs money to make those pistons, right? So they don't give you a piston, 
you need to go out and get one of those, okay? So that's that's very important to know that. Don't get mad at them. That's the reason why. They're not going to give you all this extra stuff that they know. You're not going to use any of it but one of them. Just know that. Know that, okay? Also included in the box is this little tool, which is fan It's nice that they actually have this as a three-lug tool, but it also has these little keys on it, whatever, that lock up with the direct thread. So if you are going to screw in your direct thread, this guy is basically your wrench to lock everything in. Take it on, take it off, all right? That's nice they gave you that. They also have this little sock thingy, right? Some companies give you different ones, have different things on it. This has a little Science Co. tag on it, whatever. Um, you get your instruction manual, which I highly recommend that you read. Um, specifically, you need to know what calibers this thing is rated for, what you can and can't shoot out of it. You need to know that stuff, barrel restrictions, all the stuff. You can get it offline, uh, but you need to read, you should, should, should read your instruction manual. Very important. Sometimes silencers have some weird stuff that you can and can't do. You need to know your suppressors, all right? Don't spend all this money on one of these things, wait all this time, pay all these tax stamps and everything to get your suppressor in and break it. You don't want to do that. So let's talk about some other stuff. Let's let's put these things out of the way. And, and that's the box. It's just a cardboard box. Everybody loves that. Um, let's go ahead and put on the direct thread, right? That's simply, just like the name implies, it directly threads onto the back of the suppressor. So we'll uh, thread that guy on. And like I said, this would be best suited for like a 300 blackout or the pistol caliber carbine, PCC kind of thing. I do have a 300 blackout right here. And in the shooting footage later um, in the video, you will see that this was having some cycling issues. It has nothing to do with the suppressor. I'm still working on this guy. He's been a bear and a half to try to get um, to work properly, but a direct thread just goes on here, just like this. Direct thread is very boring. You just thread it on, all right? But the nice thing about this guy is with this particular one, a direct thread usually will give you a very clean appearance, right? It's gonna look cleaner because there's not a whole lot of extra mounts and things hanging off the end of it. Um, it's also gonna cut down on your weight because if you have some kind of quick detach, that usually means you have some kind of a muzzle device, so that's extra weight on the end of the barrel. Um, and also whatever the device, the locking system is on the quick detach system, that's gonna be on your mount, right? On the, so on the suppressor side, so that's extra weight. So weight, adding on weight and everything. Ounces equal pounds, especially when they're on the end of the gun. You hear that? And it, it does make sense. You can have some mounts out there that are just stupid heavy. You know, and some of them you need them to be super heavy because the suppressor is made for like extreme duty. So it needs to be rock solid, bomb proof, whatever. That's not necessarily this guy's deal, right? Like you could do a lot with this can, but this is this is basically a pistol can, right? You're not throwing it on machine guns. At least I'm not throwing it on machine guns. So that's your direct thread. That's basically what it looks like. Take this guy off and I didn't tighten the uh, mount on there very well. Um, but the mount's on there. And this is a key note. This is something I'm actually glad that that happened. If you look at the mount, if that happens to you, hopefully you can see, on the mount, it protrudes just a little bit. These are the threads of the mount. And then you see this little portion here sticks out. It has wrench flats. It has wrench flats, people. Do you understand what that means? Um, I don't need it because I didn't tighten it that hard. But that is amazing because if you do what I just did, right, you didn't tighten it down, tighten the mount down on the suppressor very well, and you go and you, you get everything taken off. If they didn't have these wrench flats, right, then you would be up a creek trying to get this guy off because you have to be grabbing hold of the threads. So you're going to damage the crap out of your threads. But you don't have to do that. You just, you get to use these wrench flats that are built into the this little portion that sticks out right here, and you can get the, the, the mount off of your gun. That's awesome. Kudos to them. That's forward thinking. That's smart. That doesn't add a whole lot of extra time and effort, I wouldn't think, into the manufacture process. It's just an end user, like, nod to the end user, like, yes, we understand things happen. There you go. You can bust the thing loose. That's awesome. All right, some other stuff, to, since we're talking about pistols, the owner of this pistol, or pistol, since we're talking, yeah, talking about pistols, the owner of this suppressor um, has and utilizes the Griffin Armament cam lock system. So that's nice because I like that system. So I have a bunch of cam locks and stuff. So I can use the same piston that's made for the uh, Omega 45K. I can use the same piston on my 45s and 9s, right? If you have a specific piston that is half a 28, use that for your 9mm, if that's what your 9mm barrel is threaded for, or your specific other ones for 45 or whatever, what have you, this is how you put the pistons in and everything. You take your piston, basically, slides down on the inside, it'll, it'll lock into uh, some teeth on the inside, right? 
your uh, spring goes in and then your retainer goes over the top. It has a little O-ring in there. So you kind of got to force it past that O-ring. There you go, it'll kind of pop. And then you nice and uh, gently screw it down in there, right? Um, it is a good idea, good idea to put some oil on that piston um, because if that piston gets really dry, it's not gonna cycle very well for you, especially as you shoot this thing and it, and it moves and moves and keeps on going and gets hot. Sometimes that oil burns off and stuff, that carbon builds up and stuff in there, and then you can start having issues with it working properly. You just, you just need to add some oil or some grease or something on there. But now that we've got the piston on there, it doesn't stick out a terrible too lot. It sticks out a little bit. Um, here is a 45 that I have uh, with that cam lock system on there, and that's what he looks like, right? Um, with the cam lock system, you add about a, a half inch or a third of an inch, whatever that is, you add a little bit of length um, to this whole area right here. So it may not look as pretty, uh, but it's pretty functional. I like it on my systems and I'm glad the owner of the suppressor has it on there as well because it just makes it that easy to take the suppressor on and off. Um, also, that was a 45. This is a nine millimeter. Beautiful thing about this system is as long as the suppressor is rated for the caliber, so this is a bigger 45 caliber can on a smaller nine millimeter host, it's perfectly fine. So that, that cam lock system works on there just fine. Locks up on there just fine. Um, that's kind of what it looks like on a little flux rater. All right. The other thing that you have here is you can get from uh, from Silencer Co. Their, uh, their, their three lug, almost said booster. This is their booster, but their three lug. The three lug is actually nice. There's some companies out there that I really like, but their three lugs are kind of big. The Silencer Co. three lug, I think, they did a redesign of this. It's been a while ago. It would have been a while ago. But this is their low profile three lug and it is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. This is the same stuff that works on the Omega 9K, Omega 45K, both of those suppressors. This is a beautiful, beautiful design. Um, again, if you use the tool that they gave you, it locks right in there. You give it a nice little squeeze. Look how clean that is on the back. Barely protrudes at the back. The only slight downside to this is it puts the mount inside the suppressor, so it kind of takes up some of that internal volume. That's why some companies want their three lugs to stick out of the back of the can, so they save that internal volume for suppressing. I don't mind so much because aesthetically to me, I would rather have this system right here where the, where the three lug is inside the suppressor. And it, it works very well. It looks very clean on the MP5, if you see that. it's. It's hard to beat the look of an Omega 45 or a Omega 9K on an MP5. It's a very clean, very tight look. It just looks like it was made to go on there. And it kind of was. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's aesthetically very, very pleasing. And honestly, I don't think it makes that much of a difference when it comes to suppression with that mount being on the inside versus being an extended um, mount. I prefer this system over a lot of the other systems that are out there. It's just very simple. It's just very, very simple. All right, so that's kind of your mounts. That's what comes with the suppressor. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the range. Let's check this guy out in action. Um, we didn't shoot it on everything. I could have shot this on the 762 by 39 because it is rated for that, the AK. I just did not have the proper mounts for it because my mounts are a different company's mounts and I have pin and welded stuff on my barrels. Not gonna take those things off and this thing's just not compatible with the mounts that I have for those guns. So, I'm sorry, I don't have AKs being shot through this, but it is rated for it, all right? But let's check out the range footage and we'll meet back here.
All right, folks, so that is a look at the Silencer Co. Omega 45K. To be quite honest, on the 45, it sounds beautiful. I've heard and seen videos of some good people talking about how the 45 just doesn't suppress as well as some people think it does. Maybe I'm just enamored and I just overlook things that I shouldn't overlook, but I think it sounded, and I thought it, and I think, past tense, future tense, present tense, whatever, however you say it, I really like the tone and the sound of the 45 out of this can. It is, it's very, very nice. It's very, very nice, all right? Um, nine millimeter subsonic, anything really subsonic is gonna sound generally good with a grain of salt thrown in there a little bit. Um, but 300 blackout, it did sound good. I wish the gun cycled better because it would just, it's just better to hear it round after round instead of round and then racking and all that kind of stuff. But it did well, um, it, it, so it sounded nice. But honestly, the 45 out of the 45K, that's where it's at for me. I really, really like that. So that's all I got for you guys. Um, I really do like this can. Uh, it, it, it is, it's basically the same as the Omega 9K. It's just a little bit longer, same diameter, right? Um, it's just a little bit longer and bored out for, uh, for 45 instead of nine millimeter. So if you're looking at either one of those, the Omega 9K or the Omega 45K, I don't think you're gonna go wrong. They're great cans. Um, you can't change anything as far as the end cap or the front cap technically. It is what it is, it's just a welded can. Do not shoot 22 through this thing. It's not made for it. It's not even gonna sound that great. I mean, it's suppressed, yeah, but it's a 45 caliber hole if you're gonna shoot a 22 through it. Not rated for 5.56, don't throw this on your ARs, but 300 blackout, um, some of the 30 caliber stuff, 300 blackout, 7.62 by 39, the AK round, you can do that with this, um, but specifically, keeping this guy in his wheelhouse of sub guns, right? Whether that be nine millimeter uh, or 45 um, or that 1911 and 45, that's where this guy just shines. In my opinion, that's where he shines. So if you're wanting a very tough pistol can that's rated up to 45, it's hard to go wrong with this guy. It's, it's, it's a solid, solid can. That's all I got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed that. If any of you guys have one of these cans or have experience with them, whether it be good or bad, it's great to share that in the comments. I love it when you guys do because we can spread good news about stuff or warn people away from other things. If you've had bad experience with any of this stuff, people want to hear about it, right? Especially from end users because that's where you get real, true, honest opinions and stuff about things, right? Hope that makes sense. That's it. Y'all be good. You be safe. Appreciate you watching, subscribing, and everything, and hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya. Quite honestly, this is my favorite one. The uh, 45 with the, uh, yeah, this is my favorite. This is my favorite. I mean, dang, something about it. The cycle better be nice, but man, you can hear it snapping through wood. Get your past the camera. It's just something about it, man, something about it. Hit a rock. Ooh, I went somewhere. Anyway, something about that's cool, something about it.